morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the show glad to have you guys here on this Friday the 19th of January 2024 thank you for tuning in uh, let's get started let's take a look at what's going on out there and NATO whoop, NATO calls on all civilians in the West to prepare for all-out war with Russia all civilians in the West to prepare for all-out war with Russia. Rob Bauer, chair of NATO Military Committee, has warned that civilians in the West should prepare for an all-out war with Russia. We have to realize it's not a given that we are in peace, and that's why we have the plans. That's why we, NATO forces, are prepared for a conflict with Russia. So anyway, this it's this uh, situation that's happening. Well, exactly where is the real problem right now in this area of most concern, I believe. Is in this area right here. What they th I think what they think Russia's trying to do is well, we all know what's happening here in Ukraine. But over here we have we have uh now, right here, we have Belarus, right? And we have something called the, this gap here, the Swalky Gap, I think it's called. Uh, maybe I'm not pronouncing it exactly quite right, but it's the area here between, uh, between the Baltic Sea and Kaliningrad. Uh, and if that area, now Kaliningrad's right in here, this little state right in here. This, I'll try to center on it right here. This little state right in here, Kaliningrad. And you see it's not very far across here. Across Lithuania. This is the gap right in here. But it, it's, it's in Lithuania. It's right this little area, right? I'm focusing in on it. Come on, maps. Right in this area right here. And we focus back and give you a better idea. Uh, it's just next to uh, Belarus right here and it's this little tiny bridging area right in here and if they can if they're able to take that area then they effectively cut off Lithuania Latvia and Estonia are all cut off from landmass so that's an area of concern another area of concern and something that happened a little while ago and here in the Black Sea is Russia is flying reconnaissance missions in here in the Black Sea in, in a neutral area and they have orders like uh, to uh, to shoot down things if, if something gets in their way you know what I mean it's like uh, and and so this is a very tense area in here too and one of the reasons why it's so tense is because uh, we have Crimea right here and the ports and around Crimea right here centered in the middle of the Black Sea you know and uh, of course this is another war area right in here you know that's a, that's a tense region so so that's a that's another hot hot spot and, and moving over here you know we have a hot spot here in Taiwan of course you guys have probably all heard about and Taiwan is famous for their semiconductor uh, production. They supply the world with semiconductors. Uh, and right, in, they're right next to China. And in this area between the two countries right here. Uh, this is a hotly contested area. And another hotly contested area right now is the South China Sea. I believe it's uh, right in here. And it's in this area here next to the Philippines called the Spratly Islands. They don't look like much. But believe me, this is this is a very hotly contested area. And there's been uh, uh, between... It's right, you can see how close it is to the Philippines. So we got all these hot spots. And, and I didn't even get into the hot spots around, uh, uh, around uh, uh, the Red Sea here in Yemen. 
is another hot spot right here. And of course, this is probably one of the biggest hot spots nobody's talking about right now. It's just right up in here uh, next to the United Arab Emirates. And uh, this, little, this little place right here where the, where, where the Persian Gulf narrows right down, right, right in here. And they have to loop those ships in around this little Strait of Hormuz. Of course, that's probably ringing a bell with you guys when I say the Strait of Hormuz, you know. And what's on the, what's on the, the north side of the Strait of Hormuz? Iran. Well, there's another hot spot. So we got an awful lot of hot spots in the world. And, and, and two, right in here, another hot spot right in here uh, uh, in, in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, right in here around... Uh, Around Israel, you know, if we down here in the Gaza Strip, and we all know about that. Of course, you see how small the Gaza Strip is. Focusing down on it, anyway. So, so the world is a tinderbox right now, with all these hot spots. Keeping our eye on it. Now, that's not the article I wanted. North Korea, right now. Now, Russia's already got this weapon. It's called the Poseidon. And basically how the weapon works is it blows up a thermonuclear weapon underneath the water. It, it's a tor Basically, it's like a torpedo. It's like a nuclear-powered torpedo that strolls along on the bottom of the ocean. Nobody even knows it's there. It's practically undetectable. It can creep up next to a coastal city. It can blow up, and it'll make a wave... Over 1,400 foot high wave. And that's taller than the tallest skyscrapers in any of your city. And that wave will come in right over the city. And not only that, it's a nuclear wave. It's full of radiation. And so North Korea is testing this same weapon. As, uh, the Poseidon, uh, Russia's already got it. They're strolling around in the ocean out there. You might not even know where they're at. There could be one offshore and you wouldn't even know it's there called the Poseidon. So North Korea now has it. Underwater nuclear weapon system. The North Koreans not calling theirs the Poseidon. The North Koreans are, call, are calling it the H-A-E-I-L or Hill, I guess. I, I Maybe I'm not pronouncing that right. Uh, 523 it's called. The Hill 523. Uh, it says Pyongyang tested the hill 523 in waters off the east coast as the United States and its allies were seriously threatening the security of the country and destabilizing the regional situation, the North Korean Ministry of Defense has said. And so they're carrying out these tests of this new super weapon, this underwater nuke. It says... Our armies, now this is North Korea, I guess, saying this, our armies' underwater nuke-based countering posture is being further rounded off, and its various maritime and underwater responsive actions will continue to deter the hostile military maneuvers of navies of the United States and its allies, the statement said, warning of catastrophic consequences for the United States and its followers. Well, this underwater, it's basically... What it is, it's an underwater, undetectable, uh, nuclear torpedo. And if it's anything like the Russian one, it can stay underwater for years, creeping around on the seafloor until it's ready to be activated. And when it's activated, it creeps toward its target, undetected. Right on the bottom of the ocean. And then it blows up. With a horrific nuclear explosion. Sending all that water in a column up. And then the water comes down that creates this enormous tidal wave. Nuclear tidal wave. And so it's a ferocious weapon. It's a doomsday weapon is what it is. Okay. Uh, now, oh, talking about the situation where Iran and Pakistan got into a little thing where they're firing missiles. 
and stuff. And it says, could this escalation, could this situation escalate? Okay, it says Iran's military on Thursday began a planned annual air defense drill stretching from its port in Chernobyl near Pakistan in the east all the way across the country to its border with Iraq in the west. The drill includes live fire drills from aircraft, drones, and air defense systems. Fresh strikes by Iran and Pakistan cannot be ruled out, although this week's attacks raise questions about the preparedness of their own militaries, particularly in their radar and air defense systems. So basically what it's talking about is here is, I guess this attack is probably not going to escalate. As long as there's not renewed fresh attacks, you know, it's probably one of those things where, uh, because a after all, they are on that side of the world from us. We're over here on the West. We kind of, over here on the West, the world's now divided between West and East. And uh, you over there, you got a pact, an enormous pact, and it's called the BRICS. If you guys haven't heard of it, and over here on the West, we got an enormous pact, and the pact is called NATO. And so, they're both about, I, I'll tell you, if you include all the NATO countries and the power that they have in the financial system and the amount of the earth that they take up, uh, they're an enormous force. With the United States being central, front and center, as the most powerful part of that force. Now, if you take a look at the BRICS, they encompass an enormous part of the world. They're enormously powerful as well. And they, they have two very powerful twin forces, which is Russia and China is their, is their most powerful part. So on the West, the most powerful part's America. And, and on the East, the most powerful part is Russia and China together. But... It makes a, a world that's that's ready for very bad things to happen because this is a power struggle between these superpowers. Uh, what was this article I wanted to show you guys? Uh, my computer's running a little bit slow. A clone monkey survives to adulthood. Mark's research success if an, as animal advocates disapprove. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you, look at that monkey. He looks like a perfectly normally normal monkey to me. He looks well-developed and everything else. But he's been cloned. He's a clone. I'm going to tell you what. This is just a simple observation of mine. If they can clone that monkey and make a clone monkey... He's a clone monkey. And he looks perfectly normal. They can clone humans too. I'm just saying. They have the technological ability to clone a human. If they can clone a monkey that looks that much like a monkey, they can clone a human. You betcha they can. I'm just saying it would really be ethical questions if they tried to clone humans. So if they are doing it, they're certainly not going to let anybody know. <laughs> Just saying, you know. Uh, and now here, what I wanted to show you guys is this is the existing home sales in the United States. And this chart goes all the way back to 1999. Now see how home sales went way up and they peaked in around 2005. A massive surge in home sales peaked in 2005. This is existing home sales. And then we've seen the great financial crisis, the GFC, and it went all the way down. And that's just right in here where it went all the way down and it made a bottom during the great financial crisis. And that arrow points toward the bottom during the great financial crisis. Okay, and we move forward in time. We see the market recovered, and it did set a peak in around 20, 2021, 2022. It peaked up here. Massive peak. And now, do you see what's happening now? It's fallen off just like it fell off during the great financial crisis. That's because we're in, great, we're in the great financial crisis part two right now. 
But you, what you want you to notice about this chart is, is it went down and made a bottom and started to come up during the great financial crisis. Not much lower than where it is right now. But right now, we're in the middle of this fall. It's falling like a, falling like a knife, and we don't see where the bottom is. So it's on its way down. It's continuing to fall. And it's falling rapidly, and it's gaining speed. And we're at the bottom of where it was during the great financial crisis in home sales. So you, what's going to happen to real estate next? I know prices are really high in real estate. Yeah, you, you, the handwriting should be on the wall for you guys looking at this chart. Now, getting into the uh, into the the precious metals today, uh, twenty two forty nine for silver today. It's down twenty two cents. So, gold and silver aren't doing the greatest right now. Uh, what's this right here? Okay, now taking a look at cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency took a fall. The price has dropped off. 40718 for Bitcoin this morning. Ethereum is at 2448 And XRP is at 53.5 cents. Now, I'm not sure how, lo how much longer that'll last. Taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average right now, and it's at 37,646. It's up 177 points on the day. And as you can see, is we're at the peak right now of the market. And it's been bouncing along at the peak now since, uh, since the end of last year, since December of last year. It's been bouncing along at this peak. Uh, what's this market going to do, you know? I mean, it's melt-up time, you know, but we've melted up to this point right here. Now, let's just see what's going to happen with this. But there's an awful lot of deflationary pressures out there that are being basically ignored. Now, crude oil today is up 45 cents, or a half a percent, at 74.53 for crude oil. Taking a look at bonds and rates today, we're looking at rise in yields. The US 10 years at 4.16, it's up 1.7 basis points, and the US 30 years unchanged at 4.37. And taking a look here at uh, at our at our dollar is at 103.35 and it appears to be going sideways today not much change push the thumbs up button guys thank you very much for pushing it and like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already just push that subscribe button thank you guys for watching my show and we'll catch you guys in the next episode and have a great afternoon bye bye